Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy, and this is a Beyond the Source Wall edition because we're going to be talking about something DC related. So I want to thank Warner Bros. Home Entertainment again for sending me a copy of Legion of Superheroes to review. This comes out in about a week, but when this goes up, it's out today, uh, February 7th. So go get it today in digital form or in physical copy. You can buy it at your local stores, you know, Target, Walmart, any of those places, uh, Best Buy and stuff like that, or you can buy it online. And like I said, or you can get it digitally. So really cool. And speaking of digital copies, I'm going to give out a free copy of this. So boom, right there, there's the code. And that came with this Blu-ray. And as you guys know, if I get something for free, I like to share it with you if I can. So the first person to put that code in will get a copy of this movie digitally to watch for themselves and get their own review. So if you are the one who wins it and gets the copy, leave your review down in the comments down below. And it's only going to go to one person. So the first person to put that code in gets it. So, you know, type quickly. <laughs> uh, so thank you again. That's just my way of saying thanks for supporting this channel. And like I say, anytime I get a code like that, I try to share it with you guys. So on to this film, we're going to talk non-spoilers, but we might get into spoilers in the comments if people have questions. So, you know, maybe avoid the comment section if you don't want spoilers, but at least for this video, I'm going to keep it spoiler free and just talk about the film itself, which is set in this newer kind of shared DC animated universe. It's not really overtly spoken that it's shared, but they bring in some of the same voice actors like Jensen Eckel shows up as Batman for a couple scenes in this, including uh, a post credit scene, which definitely stick around for. And then Matt Bomer obviously shows up as the Flash, who he played the Flash in the World War II, you know, Justice Society movie that they did. So it was cool to get all these people back and, and come back in, uh, but then also have uh, Darren Chris, who played Superman, have him come back and introduce us to Meg Donnelly, who plays Supergirl. And this is a, a slightly different take on Supergirl, but one that you're probably also familiar with if you're a longtime Supergirl fan. Uh, she shows up on Earth. And I've always liked this take on her where she spent most of her life so far on Krypton. So she grew up on Krypton. She was a teenager on Krypton, so she's familiar with Krypton. When she comes to Earth, it's a little bit behind the times for her. And so she kind of struggles with that. And that's kind of the take they have with her in this film. And I got to give credit to the writer of the film, which is Josie Campbell, and also the director, Jeff Wemester, who, uh, who you know brought this story together. I think it starts off really good. I really like uh, seeing Solomon Grundy. I'm a big fan of Solomon Grundy. So that was cool to see him at the beginning of this and kind of set Kara and where she is as a superhero and where she is as a person trying to fit in on Earth and kind of what Cal has as a backup plan to present to her when things aren't really working out so well. So because she's on Earth, you know, she sees Solomon Grundy and then she sees his this mysterious weapon he has, which comes back later in the film. Um, and as you see when they go to the future and stuff. And then she also sees the appearance of these hooded figures that are, you know, mysterious. And they come back later on in the film, too. So, again, I don't want to get too much into spoilers, but there's a mysterious group out there that is kind of pulling the strings and has been since this time period all the way into the future. So it's all kind of connected. Um, but then you have Supergirl who's not really doing too well. She's kind of struggling a little bit. Um, and she's, you know, too powerful in, in a sense that she's she's not controlling it, I guess. She's just as powerful as Superman, but she just can't control it the, as well as he has because he's had years to develop and, and had some training. And she's kind of like, where did you get this training? And he's like, well, that brings me to my plan for you. Uh, if you don't want to stick around here on Earth, because Batman is kind of weary of her, she's causing a little too much destruction, and she's not really taking down the bad guys that well. So he comes up with a plan, Superman comes up with a plan based on Batman's, you know, suggestions. And he's like, look, I have this sphere and it can open up a portal to the future because when I was about your age on Earth, uh, I had a group of people from the future come back and tell me that I was going to inspire them uh, through my actions and through being a Superman and joining the Justice League that I would one day inspire a group of superheroes in the future. And uh, they told me if I ever needed this, uh, you know, as like a, a device, I could go back and see them in the future. And he doesn't really say all that. But that's all I'm just adding that because I know the comic book lore. That's the one thing I will say as a negative to this movie is that there are some things that if you are not a comic book fan, you are, you're going to be a little lost. You're be like, how does Superman have that device? And why does he have that device? And none of this is really explained in the movie. They just kind of get right to the point and just have Superman show up, has a sphere, and he gives it to Supergirl and they go into the future and he drops her off at the Legion Academy to train so she could become a superhero. And that's where she meets mon -El and she meets Bouncing Boy and Triplicate Girl, you know, all these great characters, Arms Fall Off Boy, uh, really great job they did. And then also the introduction of Brainiac 5. So 
Overall, this movie, it's fun, it's light, um, but there are some problems, I feel like, with the script when it comes to explaining things. Now, me, I was never lost because I've read plenty of Legion comics. I'm a big Legion fan. I've read plenty to where I'm like, okay, I can keep up with this. And I think there's enough in there that a, probably an average you know, fan of the animated stuff might be able to jump in and check it out and go, okay, I, I know enough to get through the story, but I need to go research and see why and answer some of these questions. I feel like there's a little bit of that uh, that's involved with this, you know, this movie overall. But the cast is great. I think everyone does a great job. And there's a, twi a couple twists in it, um, none of which surprised me, <laughs> again, reading comic books, um, I, but also just how structuring stories and stuff. I'm like, okay, well, they wouldn't have introduced this character if this wasn't going to happen, and they wouldn't have done this if this didn't happen, and all those things happened. So there wasn't any major surprises for me, but I still had fun watching it. Uh, I love the character of Kara zor of Supergirl, and I really love the Legion. And you actually, at one point, see every single member of the Legion in this. Uh, you don't get them all named or anything like that, so you're going to have to do some research there. But they all do show up at least once. Uh, so that was really cool to just see everybody at some point uh, in this, which was really cool. As a Legion fan, uh, it was really cool. But what I didn't realize and what I didn't see coming is that there's a B story in the present time with Batman and Superman. And I, and I felt like they just kind of left that hanging and they never really paid it off. And I was like, wow, that's, oh, that's weird. Like they just kind of dropped that completely and went full on in service of the story in the future. Why did they set that up if they weren't going to pay it off? Well, like I said, there is a, a post credit scene. They should stick around and watch that kind of you know, builds off of where they left off with Batman in the present day and Superman and the mystery they're trying to solve. And it leads into what I imagine is going to be a big crossover story or a big event or maybe the first Justice League, you know, animated film in this universe. So yeah, plenty more to come, I'm sure. So yeah, I thought this was overall a good time. I think it's worth your money if you want to go out and buy it. Um, I think it's definitely worth that. It should be added to your collection. From all the DC stuff that's been coming out currently, you know, I've had like hit or misses. Uh, Green Lantern, I was like, oh, this was good. And then at the end, I thought it got better. Uh, but I do have a, you know, some people don't agree with that opinion. And you may not agree with my opinion on this one. But as a Legion fan, I felt it did very, you know, it paid a love letter to that source material of these characters. But it got a little violent. And there's a thing in the third act that gets real creepy. It's like body horror creepy, like the thing. Um, and I don't want to say any more next because I feel like I'm going to spoil like what might be the villain of this. So uh, so please go check this movie out. It's a fun time. And if you have uh, you know similar thoughts on it, different thoughts, whatever it is, let me know down below. And again, if you won that digital code and you got to watch the movie yourself, I want to hear your review down in the comments below. Please leave your review and I will pin it at the top. Um, and if you have any other, anyone else who has a review of this, you want to share your thoughts, let me know down below. I'd love to read them and maybe we'll get into some spoilers down there. But for now, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.